Good morning. Welcome to the Wits University Faculty of Humanities virtual open day for the class of 2021. These are surreal times we live in, but we are excited to engage with you on a virtual platform. Today's program is a show, tell and answer experience. We will show and tell you what the faculty has to offer and you will be able to pose questions to our panelists who come from all the core service departments that are pertinent to your entry into the university. Kindly note that due to load shedding, the video and audio feed may become intermittent for some in the audience. This is beyond our control, but we apologize for this nonetheless. Today, we have with us all the right people to answer your questions. We have the Dean, Professor Garth Stevens, our Registrar, Ms. Carol Crossley, faculty academic representatives, and those from important service departments. I now welcome our Vice Chancellor, Professor Adam Habib, and the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Professor Garth Stevens, to address you. Students, prospective Vitsis, I hope you are well and keeping safe. We live in surreal times. I truly would not have expected to come to you in an online format and via video. But we live in these circumstances. And while I might complain, I'm sure it's much more difficult for each one of you. This is one of your momentous years. You would have loved to have the opportunity to have a metric dance. You would have loved to spend your last year with many more, with many of your friends and fellow students. But unfortunately, you too have to operate in these stressful conditions in an online format. Because, you know, in a lot of ways, this is a foretaste of things to come. And all of our challenges in this world are going to be transnational challenges. Whether we're talking about climate change, whether we're talking about public health and pandemics like the one we're going through, whether we talk about inequality or political and social polarization, each one of those challenges are transnational. And what we're going to need is great science and an understanding of context. We're going to need great technology, but we need to cohere as a human community if we are going to succeed in addressing those challenges. And truly, that's why I want you to think about coming to WITS because WITS is one of those really great institutions that captures the world, that builds, if you like, the bridges of solidarity. It is an institution beyond race, beyond class, beyond gender, beyond culture. It brings people from all of South African society and from all of the world together. It is both cosmopolitan and demographically representative. And that's important if we are going to build the bridges of human solidarity. Just think about it. In this pandemic, where are the clinical trials happening? In this pandemic, where is the debates on economic policy happening? In this pandemic, which institution is preparing the kinds of protective equipment for our frontline workers? We at the forefront of addressing the challenges of this pandemic. And the reason we can do it is because we do great science, we produce great technology, we produce great graduates, but simultaneously, we represent all of South African society. Are we political? Yes. But how can you not be political in this world? If we are going to address the challenges of our time, we need to be both political, but we need to be socially grounded. We need to be economically literate. We need to be scientifically grounded, and we need to be technologically adept. We need to bring world-class science and local understanding in one cohesive, coherent package. So I'd like to wish you all the luck in these exams. Think of it as an entrance to WITS. Because actually, not only will WITS do great things for you, it will enskill you to transform our world. 
So all the luck, and I look forward to seeing you at WITS in 2021. Warmest greetings to all of you as matriculates in the class of 2020. My name is Garth Stevens and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities here at Wits University, a faculty that I hope you will become members of. It is an absolute honor and a privilege for me to be speaking to you today as the best and the brightest minds, as the change agents of today and as the leaders of tomorrow. Let me begin by congratulating all of you for reaching the pinnacle of your schooling careers, grade 12. This in itself is an outstanding achievement that you should all be immensely proud of. These are indeed surreal times and none of us expected to be living through a global pandemic. The challenges of this moment will forever be recorded in our history and future generations will undoubtedly look back and learn from all of us. The pandemic has placed you, the matric class of 2020, under enormous pressure to navigate your most important schooling year on virtual platforms and through distance learning, putting you under the massive burden to practice self-discipline and self-learning. It is a time in our history that has made all of us across the world somewhat anxious, stressed, worried and uncertain, but you are not alone in this. We at WITS are confident that you will rise to the occasion and give this year your best, meeting the challenges head on and ultimately emerging the better for it. As a truly remarkable and resilient generation, this is precisely why I would be thrilled to host you in the Faculty of Humanities at WITS University in 2021, and I encourage you to think about this as a serious option. We as the Faculty of Humanities were ranked number one in Africa in 2019-2020 in a global survey of 536 universities, with a special mention for the exceptional quality of our research and teaching. The Humanities Faculty at WITS boasts renowned international scholars who will be your lecturers over the next several years, and I encourage you all to use them as fantastic resources. Remember that you will never again find yourself in a place where there is this concentration of so many smart and thoughtful people that you will have access to, so use them wisely. There are wonderful opportunities to explore subjects that you have not been exposed to before, so be creative with your choices and stretch your minds with new ideas in anthropology, sociology, psychology, languages, media studies, literature, politics, education and the arts, to mention but a few. The humanities is a place for the development of robust thinking and debate that is done critically but respectfully and with tolerance for diverse views. It is a place to think deeply about the future of the world, how to deal with the challenges facing us today and how we think about transforming our societies to give rise to a set of imagined futures that are yet to unfold. We all live in a challenging but exciting moment where we have the opportunities to change our futures for the betterment of all. And that is my challenge to all of you. Fulfill your potential as the best and the brightest and engage these challenges head on so that you may lead us as the next generation. When you do arrive at WITS, be an active citizen of this university. Engage socially, join clubs and societies, participate in the cultural and intellectual activities and life on campus, and open your minds to the new possibilities of what it means to be a citizen in the 21st century. I want to end by wishing all of you the best of luck for 2020 and this matric year. The finish line is in sight and your amazing futures are right before you. Go out there and seize them. I look forward to seeing you at WITS in 2021 and to seeing you in the Humanities Faculty.
Professor Stevens. Thank you, uh, thank you, Jerome, and uh, welcome to all of you. It's wonderful to really be able to speak with all of you this morning as the best and the brightest of your generation. Uh, let me say that by being part and parcel of the humanities faculty, you are indeed uh, at the premier humanities faculty, not only in South Africa, but also uh, in, uh, in, on the African continent today. So I think that, uh, that, that when one thinks about rankings and the status and the standing of the humanities faculty, we are now currently ranked as number one in Africa as a university with the academic rankings for world universities. Uh, we are in the 200 to 300 bracket. But of course, last year, the Times Higher Education rankings for the humanities faculty itself uh, indicated that we were number one as a faculty from uh, all faculties of humanities uh, in Africa as well. And that included for not only humanities more broadly, but also in the performing arts, arts and design. Of course, we've had many other areas like education, politics, uh, media studies, English, international relations that have also been uh, really hailed as key departments in our faculty. So again, this is a premier faculty of humanities, the premier faculty of humanities in, uh, in South Africa and on the African continent. I really encourage you to take the opportunity because it is an opportunity of a lifetime to essentially enjoy the mentorship of locally, continentally and internationally renowned scholars that you will have the opportunity to work with and who will mentor you during your time in the humanities faculty and your advert. Me again, we are now going to a question and answer session. So please remember to post your questions on the screens in the question and answer chat room only. My name is Jerome September. I am the Dean of Student Affairs here at the University of the Witwatersrand. We've now spoken and you've gotten quite a good sense of what we have to offer. And earlier the Dean spoke about the ranking of the faculty. But Professor Stevens, could you give us a sense of how ready or how prepared the humanities faculty is for the 4IR? So again, thanks, Jerome, and that's a great question. Uh, of course, the, 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 the fact of the, of the matter is that COVID-19 has propelled us and catapulted us into a completely different uh, kind of sense of being in the world today. And so what we are starting to see, of course, is that technological advancement has had to take uh, precedence, certainly in the teaching and learning environment. In the humanities faculty, like in uh, the rest of the university, of course, we've moved to online. We've made sure that we've uh, engaged infrastructural development. We've sorted out student data, devices. We've been engaged with smart classrooms thinking about how to capture lectures, because I think what we know is that the future is really going to be a future that is one that is focused on blended learning, both face-to-face -face and, of course, learning uh, through online platforms. As far as teaching and learning is concerned, what this has meant is that we've had to think about ways of rethinking teaching, rethinking learning, and certainly upskilling our staff across the university into this blended format. But the most important thing about the fourth industrial revolution, I think, is that we need to be aware that the fourth industrial revolution has been happening for the last three to four decades already. This is not just a moment that has come upon us. In fact, the fourth industrial revolution is not simply about technology, but it is about technology and its relationship to people and society. And so what we are keen on thinking about in the humanities mm -hmm. is how it is that technology and society interfaces. What will be the nature of cities in the future? What will be the nature of the environment in the future? How will we think about creativity and technology? How will we think about the arts and technology? We will have to think about what it means to be human as technology and humans become more and more fused. Mm -hmm. And this will have implications for philosophy, for ethics, for democracy, for rights and for citizenship. So this is really uh, a critical question in the humanities today, and in fact, will be a leading question that the humanities will be, will be taking on in the years to come. Thanks, Jerome. Thank you, Prof. Um, this, of course, um, Hali Madao, um, Prof spoke about, um, you know, our, our preparedness now, 
also around COVID-19. And I see questions around whether classes will be online next year, what changes will there be due to COVID-19, and some of the measures in place to help manage the spread of the virus. Could, could you give us a sense of that from the faculty perspective? Hali? Hi, Jerome. Thank you so much for the question. Um, for the Faculty of Humanities measures that we've put in place to um, um, minimize the spread of COVID-19, uh, the faculty, the, the university already has, um, you know, a screening app that is used and accessed by both staff and students when they enter campus. So um, besides the screening app, you also get a manual form that you, you can complete and based on the outcome they allow you into, into campus. When you enter campus, the Faculty of Humanities is situated in the Southwest Engineering Building. Um, what we have put in place there is we've got the, um, we have installed the uh, mounted, the wall mounted um, hand dispensers, sanitizers where you can um, easily use them. And as you enter the, the faculty office, we have also put in place the uh, food petal dispenser stains that you can use to sanitize your hand. We also have put um, the uh, perplex screen on our reception area um, just to minimize the spread and we will ensure that you know the reception area is sanitized all the time. Um, we Currently, we're limiting physical access to the office. Staff are working from home. We do have staff who come to the office and we do see students by appointment. And um, we only have about four staff members in the office to ensure uh, social distancing. Okay. Thanks, Jerome. Thank Thank you for, for that. Um, registrar, prof um, oh, I almost said professor. <laughs> um, to our registrar, Carol Crossley, there's quite a few questions around the NBTs, the entry requirements. Do we look at, at extra murals? So could, could you give us a sense of the, of, of the entry requirements? But can you also then um, look, look at the questions around how many places are available? Will we be increasing the numbers due to, 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 to COVID-19? So what are we looking for for entry into, into this faculty? Okay, thank you, Jerome. Good morning, um, applicants. Um, I'm hoping that, and I can see from some of the questions and answers that are being uh, posed, is that um, depending on which program you are applying for, obviously it um, the what we call the academic point score, which is essentially your matric results, um, currently your grade 11 results. That is the main entry requirement, depending on the program that you are applying for. Some of the professional degrees, obviously, there may be some kind of selection procedure, either involving an interview or an exercise that you have to do. But at this stage, most of our matriculants know that the national benchmark tests are not being used for any of the programs perhaps that where it had been a requirement, um, we are basing it almost entirely on your matric results. I also want to encourage, I've seen some of the questions coming through for some of the matriculants who are a bit concerned that their grade 11 results weren't that good. Remember, VITS reassesses your application on the basis of your final matric results. So you really need to use that as a motivator to ensure you get the best possible marks. Um, the university doesn't really look at um, criteria beyond the academic results. Um, so things like um, sports achievements, etc. But we certainly take that into consideration if we're assessing you for a scholarship or a bursary of some sort. So I would encourage you to do that. Are we going to increase the numbers? Unfortunately, no, we do have limited number of places available and it really is unbelievably competitive. So I would encourage the matriculants to do the best they possibly can. We have limited number of places available. So in the Faculty of Humanities, our first year cohort in total comes to about 1,400 that we have place for. Our general Bachelor of Arts, we take in about 560 to 590 first years. 
And then, of course, our specialist degrees, those numbers are much smaller, and they range, for example, in drama to about 50 students, music, um, a very small class of approximately 20 or so, social work, we take about 70, and speech, language, pathology, and audiology, they have a smallish class of about 30 each. Um, for the Bachelor of Arts in Law, where the entry requirements are a little bit more stringent, we have, a, we have space for about 100 students there. Um, so you can see it's incredibly competitive, and I would really encourage the matriculants, despite the circumstances that they find themselves in, to really try and achieve the best that they possibly can. Jerome, I'm happy to take other questions, but I think for now, those are the two specific ones. Thank you. Yeah, um, but, but, but while you are on the floor, yes. I see a question that yes. asks, when will the 2021 academic year start? Will it be later? If so, when? Could, 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 could you perhaps also just take that one? Yes, I'm happy to answer that. So most of you will have heard that the matric results will be released round about the 23rd of February. Um, so just to assure matriculants, we usually get the results, what we call embargoed results, um, three or four days before the time. And we will work furiously at ensuring that on the day of the results um, being released, we would like to be making the offers to our matriculants, to our top, top achieving matriculants. But obviously then it's an ongoing process. And in the course of the days from the 23rd of Feb, right up until the end of February, probably we make offers on an ongoing basis. So um, we are expecting those matric results as the matriculants would be the 23rd of February when they get announced publicly. And then we go through the process. We're hoping, obviously, that we would encourage students to register online once they've been made an offer. Just a small thing I do want to point out because I've seen quite a few questions coming through, Jerome. So remember, mm. at WITS, we don't work on a choice basis. We treat all the applications um, equally. So if you've got particularly good marks, you could get an offer in all three programs. Um, but then what we do is when we make you the offer, we will give you only two or three days to accept that offer via an SMS or going onto the self-service portal, because obviously we want to be able to allocate a place for you. And if you're not taking up the offer, we want to be able to offer it to somebody else because places are so, so limited. So um, we ask our students to make sure that they take up their offer within three days. And then we are expecting the university term to commence around about the 8th of March. That's at this stage, that's what we anticipate in the first day of term to be. Thank you, Jerome. Okay. Thank you for that. Megan Deerham, I see there's a question around when, when I will get a response or an offer once I have applied. Can, can you perhaps give us a sense of that? Once I've applied, when do I get a response or an offer? Good morning. Um, good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So basically once the application has been received and all the application documents have been uploaded and the applications have been marked complete, um, depending on the selection processes for the various schools, um, the schools will be notified of those applications and the schools will then, um, uh, they will be invited, the students will be invited to the selection. Um, once the schools have finalized the um, decisions process or the, um, which students they would like to accept, they will then notify the enrollment center and then the enrollment center then updates that um, acceptance or decline and communicates with the student. Usually we try and keep that um, within a four to six week um, turnaround time, but obviously due to um, the COVID um, um, implications of the lockdown, the turnaround times may be a little bit delayed. So if students do not receive an, uh, responses within that period and are worried about the applications, they can just contact the assigned consultants for any updates and keep checking the student portal to see if the applications are being assessed. Thank you. Nazim, a question around residences. Will they be open next year? What can students expect if they come to, to res? Can you give us a brief sense of that? Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Program Director uh, Jerome. Uh, thank you very much for that question and uh, welcome to all the bubbly matriculants who are currently on, on this, on this uh, virtual session itself. 
We will definitely be open in residences in 2021. The university residence program has got 6,450 beds within the residence program. And as a university, we are committed to ensuring that we try and provide as much uh, residence places to first year students, because we are committed to ensuring that they settle into the university uh, culture and ethos and vision so that we are able to ensure that the academic success as well can be guaranteed and protected in the journey that they take as they enter the university system itself. So yes, there was also a question around uh, being ready in terms of being uh, COVID uh, protected. Uh, we are all putting the measures in place in terms of health and safety to make sure that in fact our residences do comply with what is required from the Minister of Health. And we will definitely be open in 2021. We look forward to receiving uh, all the matriculants who have been accepted at the university. And we encourage them to please apply through the procedure that's available when they do apply online for faculty place, that there is a section that also relates to residences and they must make sure that the application is in. Uh, and through that way, we can guarantee trying to afford them a place in residence, providing that they meet the requirements. We also have close relationships with private accommodation providers and therefore those widens the net in terms of choices for students in terms of residences as well and residence places. Thank you very much, uh, Jerome. Thank you, Nazim. Uh, Sam Samkele and Gozwana, there's a question around specialization. So the question is, what if I don't see a program or a degree choice on the application form? How do I choose a specialization? Sam Kele? Thank you, Jerome. If, if a program is not showing on, on, on our online uh, website, it means that uh, chances are that that program is not offered. However, what applicants can then do is to maybe contact our vet call center and then find out if that program is available or not. But in terms of professional degrees, all that VETS offers, they are all available on the website. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Colleagues, and I guess this is a big question in, in the humanities area, um, questions around jobs, uh, what jobs can I get by choosing a humanities degree? I'm here gonna ask the various heads of school to come in to give us a sense um, of this, so Prof. Dan Ojuan, uh, Prof. Brett Piper, Prof. Sharon Munsami, Prof. Felix Maringi, and Prof. Muka Musemwa, if you could come in one after the other and just give us a sense of the jobs that are available in, in the humanities field. Prof. Dan, if you can start us. Uh, uh, Jerome, thanks. Um, in uh, the School of Literature, Language and Media, I mean, we offer uh, an extremely wide variety of uh, courses. Um, we have more than 16 departments, uh, mostly literature department, uh, language department, uh, media studies, journalism, uh, linguistics, uh, 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 and several others, uh, including uh, modern European languages like Spanish, French. Um, um, now, the range of careers that students uh, who take uh, these courses uh, can pursue uh, after graduation are, of course, uh, numerous. Uh, those who are interested in teaching, you know, our language subjects are, uh, you, you know, are, are taught, uh, you know, in many schools across the country. Um, uh, so English, you know, French, um, uh, there are schools where Portuguese is offered. Um, um, uh, of course, those who are interested in pursuing academic and research careers, uh, you know, can come and study with us. Those who are interested in getting into uh, the media industry as journalists, uh, as media analysts, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, can productively uh, uh, study uh, with us. Um, uh, the permutations are endless. I think what uh, you know, our entrants need to remember is that a BA degree, uh, you know, prepares you for life uh, more generally. Uh, uh, it prepares you uh, to approach the world of work in as flexible a way as possible. Uh, uh, it trains you for critical thinking that enables you to function 
uh, in whichever uh, career you wish to, to, to get into. So if you look uh, you know, uh, at the number of our graduates uh, you know, who are CEOs, uh, the number of our graduates uh, who are leaders in their various fields, uh, uh, you know, there are many. Um, and the common uh, factor you know, in you know, many of our graduates who are successful is that the creative uh, thinking that we train them for enables them to, to be flexible, uh, to fit in whichever capacity uh, you know, they find themselves in. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you, sir. Um, Prof. Brett, if you can come in, please. Any possibilities on your side, jobs? Hello, Jerome, indeed. And jobs are always an interesting question in the arts, which even before COVID often are not tied to long-term permanent jobs, but a very entrepreneurial, very dynamic, and often very self-generated kind of space. So um, building on, on what Prof. Zhuang has said, I think one of the interesting opportunities at this time, uh, obviously we teach the core traditional arts disciplines in the performing and visual arts, but these are highly transferable skills that are in fact used in every workplace. The ability to communicate effectively using not only words, but images and sounds the ability to think critically uh, with respect to a practice. And we find that many of our arts graduates, um, although some of them go into professional arts practice, many of them move into other areas of the related creative uh, industries, um, or go into the applied fields where, for example, they work in uh, applied theater, drama therapy, in cultural policy and management, in running arts organizations, in curating spaces. So it's a very interdisciplinary space, and that's maybe one of the opportunities about studying in the Witt School of Arts, particularly because the arts are not separate in different parts of the university, but are part of a school, and some of our academic majors are taught together, which means that the interdisciplinary potential uh, for an arts education and the ability to apply it in a wide range of worlds is something we encourage. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, Prof. Munsemi, uh, the same question, job possibilities. Thank you, Jerome. Um, welcome, students. I want to invite you to listen to what School of Human Community Development has to offer. We have four programs. We are professional degree programs. As you heard from uh, Carol Crossley, some, some of these programs have small numbers as compared to the larger programs in the university. Three of the programs, social work, speech pathology, and audiology, are undergraduate professional programs. Uh, the psychology program takes a larger number of students, but should you choose to become, wanting to become a psychologist, you would then study as in a postgrad program. So the programs uh, cover the courses that uh, each of the programs of social work, speech pathology, and audiology and while doing that, they also send the students out into the communities in order to do the practical work. So you are training while you are studying. It is important to know that we are here in this school to make a difference among the communities that we work with. We welcome you. We hope you'll be interested to join us. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you. Prof. Musemwa, same question. Job opportunities, career possibilities. Yes, indeed. Welcome uh, to you all, uh, prospective uh, students. Uh, we would love to see you in the you know, School of Social Sciences. Um, and just to begin by saying that the School of Social Sciences has got uh, six disciplines. Uh, this is where you find anthropology, history, international relations, philosophy, political studies, and sociology. Now, these are just undergraduate um, you know, courses that you take, and we have a whole range of postgraduate um, you know, fields that um, you can take. So we hope that once you're done with your first uh, degree, uh, you won't even look beyond the School of Social Sciences because we, we have everything that we would love to, to give to you. Now, in terms of jobs, those disciplines that I've just mentioned, are uh, what constitutes the uh, social sciences. And social sciences, we believe, is a powerful and versatile academic foundation 
where you will develop skills valued by a range of potential employers. And these include oral and written communication, teamwork, qualitative and quantitative research, technical, analytical, critical thinking, and organizational and problem solving skills. So having said that, a degree in the social sciences will prepare you for careers in many fields, including, including but not limited to education, law, research, politics, social work, public policy and administration, business administration, human resources and development. Uh, and so you will find careers in a number of fields because we're not a, a, a professional you know, degree giving school. So you are going to find uh, work in professional research in fields of community, economics, local politics, and uh, land claims, business cultures, social issues. You know, it's a whole range of, of, of things. Um, but because we teach you to be imaginative, you won't find uh, problems in, um, in, 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 in finding a, you know, a job to do ultimately. You heard the vice chancellor say, ask the question, are we political? And he boldly said, yes. One way, one way to answer that question is to say that some of our graduates have left the School of Social Sciences to become straight, to become um, you know, diplomats, politicians um, in both the ruling party. Uh, some have become MPs, others in the opposition. And I'm sure you know some of the people I'm talking about. So I would like to end at that and ask you to seriously consider the social sciences. Thank you very much, Jerome. Thank you, sir. One more school to go, education. Prof. Felix, over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Jerome. Um, education is one of the uh, top schools of uh, professional education in the country. Uh, we have the uh, position of being in the same position as the University of uh, the Cape Town and also UKZN. We share the same position as number one. So we are really very proud of uh, what we do at the School of Education. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, the teaching programs are divided into about nine divisions. And out of those nine divisions, there are, they are divisions which help students to understand the basics, the basic um, you know, uh, curriculum issues around education, the basic philosoph philosophy issues around education, the basic sociological issues around education. But at the same time, all students will also be trained to teach in subject areas. And the areas where we train our students in, to teach in, in uh, specific subject areas are uh, in the areas of technology, for example, are uh, in the areas of uh, mathematics, are uh, in the areas of science, uh, in the areas of the social and economic sciences. Uh, and most of our students, in fact, the primary destination for our students is as teachers in schools. But many of them, immediately after they have served in the schools for a few years, they find themselves moving into positions in districts uh, as district education officers. Uh, they also find themselves moving into places like colleges, where they also become, you know, lecturers, tutors, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much, indeed, Jerome. Thank you, sir. Uh, Radley, Eckersley, there's a question around the distinction between math and math lit. Could you just give us a sense of that? Is there a distinction? What is the distinction we make? Thanks, Jerome. Uh, yes, there is definitely a distinction. Math literacy is a subject that uh, encompasses maths that we use in our everyday lives, such as budgeting and interest calculations, whereas core maths deals with uh, uh, subjects such as uh, trigonometry, uh, geometry, and algebra. It's very important to note, though, that if you take maths literacy, it can be limiting in terms of the programs that you can apply for. 
uh, programs such as engineering, commerce, and science would require that you have pure maths. Um, some of our education programs now I think also might require the, the pure maths. Um, so just be careful about that and just make note that if you have maths literacy, you may only be eligible for programs that do not require the pure maths. Thanks, Jerome. Okay, thank you for that. Andrea, there's a question around uh, the difference between a few programs. So that is, what is the difference between a BA law, a BCom law, and an LLB? Can you give us a sense of that? Yes, good morning, ah, Jerome. <laughs> yes. Good morning, everybody. So this offers multiple routes into the LLB degree. And while you can apply to go straight into the four-year program, it's strongly advisable to consider either completing a three-year BA law or BCom law before then applying as a graduate into the third year of the LLB program, as this gives you a much broader educational base from which to work. You can also apply after completing any undergraduate degree into the sec into second year of the LLB as a graduate. So really it's a strong foundation that you're going to get by completing a degree outside of the four year LLB first. Thanks. Okay, so, so, so while I have you on the floor, there are questions around how we, whether we treat the IEB and the NSC any differently. Um, can you just respond to that? Thanks, so there's, we don't distinguish between the IEB and any other um, metric type. Results come out, they get sent to us directly from the Department of Education or from the IEB itself. We make decisions pretty much on the day that the results come in. Even though the IEB come out slightly ahead of the, the government exams, decisions will go out to everybody once all metric results have been released. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Prof. Stevens, uh, should I do postgraduate studies if I study in the humanities faculty? Well, uh, Jerome, let me say that um, once you're in the humanities faculty, you're going to stay in the humanities faculty. So, <laughs> uh, of course, people should, should just think about uh, doing as, as a long a stint in the humanities, given what everybody said about critical thinking and the way that uh, the skills in the humanities faculty can be put to use in other, in, in other parts of social life. But let me say that, that uh, this is a research intensive and a postgraduate intensive university. And this means that we are committed to producing new knowledge. And this is what the postgraduate uh, programs are really all about. And this is what research intensivity is really all about, producing new knowledge. And so we'd be thrilled to have people in the humanities of course, stay beyond the undergraduate degree and do postgraduate studies to become the new knowledge producers of tomorrow uh, and, to, and to really contribute to new thought and the revitalization of thought in every discipline, whether it's drama or philosophy or psychology, sociology, education. We really require new knowledge to be filling these disciplines over and over and over again. That being said though, I think the question is really whether you have to do a postgraduate degree if you're in the humanities faculty. And the answer to that is no. There are different ways that students come into the, 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 the faculty. Obviously the most common is the, the standard three-year degree that most people will do. Others in certain professional programs in the arts, in the School of Human and Community Development and in the uh, School of Education will probably be doing a four-year degree. And thereafter, many people will leave and exit and go into the world of work, sometimes coming back later on to do postgraduate degrees. If you are keen to become a knowledge producer of the future, then of course, postgrad is for you. And this means that you will stay on to do an honors degree and or a master's degree and or a PhD. And again, I encourage you, I welcome you to stay and to really contribute to becoming part of the knowledge producers of tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you for that. Um, Ishmael, um, questions around studies. How do I fund my studies? What are the funding opportunities that's available? Can you give us a sense of that? Oh, Charlene, um, I see both Charlene and Ishmael logging on. Okay. 
come come in Ismail and then Salim if if you want to add to it then then you can come in after Ismail come in Ismail okay good morning colleagues uh, thank you thank you Jerome uh, we in, in in terms of funding we we urge all students to actually apply for this first the this first applications are actually open they open on the 3rd of August and they close on the 30th of November we also encourage students to look at our financial aid website under the fees and funding to look at the latest funding options that are available for students. We also have, uh, we also offer payment plans to, the, to students who cannot afford their fees. It's a, 10, it's a 10 month payment option that allows students to pay off the fees during the course of the year. We also have an external platform which is called Phoenix where students are allowed to actually register themselves on this platform, they can market themselves, and usually if there's a potential donor out there that actually is interested in them, it can also fund them. So there are a variety of funding options that, that we do offer. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you. Um, Registrar, um, I see questions around um, can I study two degrees at an undergraduate level at WIRTS? Is the language of instruction only English? Can you take those two for us, please? A pleasure, Jerome. So yes, the university's language of instruction is English. Um, although you will know that we also um, have other languages that many of our students speak, but in terms of class and tuition, English is the medium of instruction. As far as would I be able to study two degrees at the same time, if I understood you correctly, yeah. we wish that we could have students doing that, but um, <laughs> you will find that studying just one degree is incredibly demanding. And um, we certainly, particularly at first year level, we have found that the adjustment from school to university is quite extensive. And probably what we would encourage most students is to just focus on the degree structure as advised by the faculty, and then from there um, take it. Obviously, there are exceptions where we have some students, for example, wanting to do additional courses other than what their program allows. And in that instance, I would always encourage them to speak to the faculty to the um, assistant dean or to the academic advisors um, who would obviously look at cases uh, at situations like that on a case-by-case -case basis but we would encourage our students to to stick with the program and stick with the curriculum that is advised for them at registration time thanks jerome thank you ma'am um, so matriculants or applicants um, thank you for having joined us today I will now ask um, Sasha Naika, who heads up our student liaison office, uh, to do a vote of thanks and to give us a sense of what to expect from here onwards. Sasha? Thanks, Jerome. So, good morning, colleagues, learners, and parents. Please don't panic if your questions weren't answered during this online session. The school's liaison office will be following up on these questions and we will try our level best to get you answers post the event. Also, don't forget to check out our new career advisory videos at the bottom of our homepage. These are really fantastic, and I think it will help answer some of the questions that you've had here this morning. So I would like to thank the Vice Chancellor and the Dean for the inspirational words here today. I would also like to thank the faculty for hosting this virtual focus day. The Dean of Students, Jerome September, for emceeing the event, all the academics for their support and participation, as well as administrative and service departments that have helped put this event together with a special thanks to public relations and events and marketing staff. We would like to thank the parents who have encouraged and motivated and joined their children online here today. But most importantly, thank you to you, our applicants, and hopefully future VITSEs. We hope that you've enjoyed the event. Now, before I end, I'm going to digress for a minute and I'm going to talk about time travel. I'm going to disagree with our new incoming Vice Chancellor, Prof. Bilakazi, as he has said that time travel isn't possible. And I'm heading into dangerous territory right now, and I'm going to do this for you and say it is possible. But I'm not going to debate Einstein, Newton, or the world of quantum. 
I want you to visualize with me for a minute right now. Six months into the future, you open an email and it says, congratulations, you have been made an offer to come and study at WITS in 2021. You start your journey in this brilliant city of gold, the heartbeat of the African continent, with its financial and industrial hub, cutting edge contemporary galleries, urban precincts, funky restaurants, cafes, and art studios. You're sitting in the lecture halls where Nelson Mandela, Robert Subukwe, Patrice Masepe, and Tuli Madansela once sat. You're in the dissection halls where Prof. Philip Tobias and Prof. Sidney Brenner started their medical journeys. You're on the stages where Claire Johnston and Johnny Clegg once honed their musical skills. You already here on the steps of the famous Great Hall, surrounded by some of the most incredible young minds of your generation, but only because you didn't let this pandemic defeat you. Time travel is possible, and you don't need a time machine either. All you need is hard work, dedication, and perseverance. The future is yours. Make it happen. The University of Witwatersrand looks forward to welcoming you here next year. Thank you.